Hello, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Good. Oh, I like all those hearty goods out there. Nice. Well, welcome to Church in the Village. Welcome to those of you who are watching online. It's good to be with you this morning. If you will stand with us, we're going to lift up our voices, as we always do, in the house of the Lord. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise, oh, 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 shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. He hung up on that cross, he rose up from that grave, my God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. We were the bankers, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. So let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the bankers, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven. Accepted, deep by His grace, so let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We'll shout out your praise. Would you give the Lord some praise? Amen. There is joy in the house of the Lord today. All right, would you take a moment to greet your neighbor and let him know that you are so glad to see them here this morning. Thank you. I think so.
Good morning. Um, welcome to Church in the Village. I'm Eric. For you, I got for you. Don't know who I am. Most of you guys kind of do. If you maybe popped on online and checked us, that's who I am. Or Church in the Village. We're glad that you joined us this morning. Um, we'll just get out of the way. You guys, whatever you want to say to me, you can say to me today. That's part of being. That's part of being a team. That's part of being a, a fan. So you can say whatever you want to say to me today, and I'm going to be okay, right? So. Um, um, for you guys that don't know, I am a Notre Dame football fan, so just get it out of the way, all right? Just say it where I can't hear it now. I just ask you to keep it easy on Brody right now. So, so um, um, we do have a few announcements this morning that I just kind of want to hit on real quick. Tonight, Student Crossings is on at a location. Um, we will be at Tom's Corn Maze. Um, if you need a ride out there, just get a hold of us. Tell us afterwards. We'll come get you, and we can pick you up. That's, that is for students, but it is for really anybody who wants to come out and go to Tom's Corner Base. It's just um, it's going to be a good time. We've got a little bonfire out there. We're going to be out there at 3.30. They close a little bit early on Sundays, so we'll be out there, and we'll start the maze around 3.30-ish, so we'll wait till everybody kind of gets there, and uh, we'll go off into the maze, um, and then uh, we'll go, and we'll have some s'mores and some, some of that stuff. If you can't make it by 3.30, just let me know that you're coming, and we'll make sure that we get a wristband for you, for you, and we can get you in there, and that way you can kind of have a good time with us. So that's tonight. Um, we do have our village crossings this week on Tuesday at Lisa's. Uh, Wednesday, my house may be changing. We, we might change it just for one week because somebody asked that if they could host it at their house, and we want to make sure that that might be okay. And if that's still okay, I don't know. I'm trying to look at him, but... Uh, all right, so that might still be okay. So if you're a part of ours on Wednesday, um, just be real. Send a text out to everybody and let you know. It's just a block. It's like two blocks over from our house, so it's not like we're going to be like, oh, you got to drive 20 minutes. It's just on Metal Art Drive. So, um, so if you want to come out for that, um, let us know. And by the way, it's Dusty's house. That's who I was waiting on. Um, I think he was texting me some trash talk, but that's all right. But uh, um, so that's on Wednesday. Thursday this week at um, at 5:30 we will be feeding the football team here at Carlisle. Be be here at 4:30. I think the meal starts at five. Um, if you want to help out with that, let mom know, let Brenda know, let Heather know. They kind of head that up. Um, I'm going to try to be. My mom asked me yesterday. She goes, "Hey, you need to be a you need to be the." front runner of and show them what grace is if you can show up eric and i said well i don't get out of practice until five myself but i will come and um so i'm going to try to be there just to kind of rally up rally up those guys and just tell them we love them they've they've got some dudes that's been hurt and all that kind of stuff so they need some people wrapping their arms around them so i think thursday will be good for our football team um they, they can have somebody love on them so if you want to be a part of that let us know i think of meatballs right meatball subs and, and mac and cheese so here's the deal when you help with a meal you get a meal all right so that's a perk you don't just serve you get a meal all right so if you like meatballs and and knowing my mom and the people that take care of it there is going to be a army of meatballs there so you'll probably be able to take some meatballs home right i um, trying to think um, trunk or treat trunk or treat is a um, fastly approaching um, October is fastly approaching. When I looked at my calendar this morning, um, I saw that we're like exactly seven days from October. And it's still 90 degrees outside sometimes, but we're, we're seven days. So that means that our trunk or treat will be coming. And uh, that is Sunday the 29th. And so if you want to be a part of that, all you got to do is show up here in the student parking lot. You can decorate a trunk. If you don't want to decorate a trunk, you can just open your trunk. All right. If you don't want to open your trunk, then you can come and help us serve whatever we're going to serve that morning, right? Or that that day. And, and so we do that in partnership with Valley Real Estate, and it's a pretty big event. So we'll probably have. I think last year we had 300, 400 people come through. Um, so it's a pretty big event for our village, and we wanted to try it opposite of of trick or treat night, so people would be able to feel more comfortable coming and helping out with it. Um, and you might ask, and I'll just be real quick with this, you might ask, why do we do little things like this? This is why. And we talked a little bit about it Wednesday night. Anything that will afford us to have a conversation about Jesus with anybody. And it might just be as simple as saying, you know what? 
we're going to open our trunk, we're going to out can and hand out candy. And all I wait for is the question is simply this question, why are you doing this? And so if you ever see me get a big smile on my face and I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody, it's because they ask me the question, why are you doing this? And we can simply just say this, we just want to be kind, we want to take care of you, we want to love on you because... I was loved on by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I can have this conversation of when I was lost, when I was gone, he reached down and he picked me up. When I was dead in my sins, he gave me a new life through his resurrection and his death, right? So we do these things just to have a conversation. Because I think the more conversations we have, the more people get to see Jesus. So with that, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for opportunities. We thank you for Sunday mornings. I thank you for Amber and Matt who, who are willing to come and just lift up their talents to you as sacrifices. But Lord, what I ask for more than just today, what I ask is, is that you just start sending your spirit, not only inside of us, but all across our village here in Carlisle, all across our little villages, whatever that is, whatever the connections we have, whatever the circles we have, I pray right now that you just start opening somebody's hard heart. Lord, I pray that this spurs us this morning, that, that just pure worship, just authentic worship of you, that we just not only see songs, but we just lift our lives up to you this morning. Lord, do something inside of us, inside this room, outside this room that we've never seen before. Lord, let it start today. And we ask this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with us?
Lord, for your breakthrough. So many times, Lord, the problem seems so big, but you are even bigger, Lord. Greater are you who is in us than he that is in this world, than anything that we would ever face in this world. You are bigger. And so, Lord, I just pray that that revelation would just overtake us this morning that we would just feel the peace of knowing, God, that you are with us and you are strong enough to do anything, anything in our lives, Lord. If there's anyone in here, Lord, God, who is just wondering, Lord, where the light at the end of the tunnel is, Lord, I just pray that this morning, God, you would give them the peace of knowing that you are with them and you are bigger. And they are okay because you are here. We cast our cares upon you, Lord, because you care for us. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God of the breakthrough. You are so good, and we love you. And we just rest, Lord, in the knowledge that you are here and that you care. You care, Lord, and you see us. Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in every season. So why would he fail? He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't.
that my house was built on you. I'm saved with you, and I'm going to make it through. Yeah, I'm going to make it through. Cause I'm standing strong on you. I'm going to make it through. Cause my house is built on you. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. You won't fail. You won't fail. You won't. You won't. You won't fail. You won't fail. Oh, he. Father, we do come and we're thankful for that, the fact that it won't fail. That the firm date, the foundation is firm and strong because it's built on you and your word. So Lord, let us just continue as we open that word this morning that we just keep building that foundation as, as we look into these beatitudes, we looked into we look into these blessings we get as following you. We ask this in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Kids, you can head on back with Miss Stacy this Sunday. So, Brody's coming around if you want to give. Give him a good handshake and a smile this morning. He could probably use a good handshake and a smile this morning. Maybe a hug. I don't know, he's not much of a hugger, so it's kind of a weird just kind of hug when you hug Brody, right? So um, I'm going to be honest, um, and inheritance is, we're going to talk a little bit about inheritance this morning, and it's something that I don't, I really never even thought of and uh, until I turned 40. When I turned 40, um, life started just kind of, it's almost like you just, I don't want to say I'm, I'm on top of the hill, or that I'm on, you know, that, but I, I kind of start thinking about things I never really think of before, right? When you, some of you guys are in here, you're not 40 yet, but when you get there, you just start thinking. So I never really thought about the word inheritance until I turned 40, but I do joke all the time. I've been joking since I've had kids that my mom and dad must not trust me and Heather with the inheritance that they were going to leave us. Because what I see is they're just trying to spend it all up on my kids and her kids. Right? Like, I look and I'm like, the things when I was growing up, they're just like, no, we got to save our money. We can't do that. And, and then it's like our kids will ask something, and then they'll just be like, oh, yeah, how much did it cost? It doesn't matter, baby. <laughs> Anybody else like that with your, with, like, your grand? Like, you know, it doesn't matter what it costs. Oh, let them do this. Let them do that. And so when I think of inheritance, that's what I think of. I think I don't think of really what we're going to dig into but i think of the fact that i want to live my i want to leave something for my kids but more importantly i probably want to leave a name for my kids right they're probably like well i don't want your name i want what you got well i ain't got a lot so you're gonna get that too right so the word inherit and to inherit something really means to take or receive property or the like and i like this part of it at the end by virtue of just being an heir to it so ultimately, when we think about inheritance, it isn't really about the m money or possessions you get, right? But it's the fact that you're an heir to somebody. Like, you're not celebrating what you get, right? Now, there's things that I know that because I was the last Clarkson male in our line of Clarksons that now Brody has that, all that weight on his shoulders, right? He has all that weight on his shoulders that there's things that we get from my grandparents on dad's side. And also, well, not much on mom's side because that kind of, she's got, she had 12 brothers and sisters, so you add all those up. 
there's a lot of splitting of the inheritance on that, right? So, and then that's not even counting that we were the smallest family of just two kids. Everybody else had like four or more. So there's a lot. When we go mom's side, it is a, it's a lot. I had to take a breath when I think about it, right? But on dad's side, there's some things that we know we get. Like my grandpa was a coin collector. So there's coins that we know that we'll probably get at some point. Right, maybe. I don't know. Me and dad sometimes get after it on some things. So he might have cut me out of that. Right? But it's, it's not the fact that we get these things, right? It's the fact that we're an heir to our parents. It's an heir, we're an heir to our family that we have, right? And see, as we keep stepping on this ladder that we talked about, that is the Beatitudes, right? We know the first step is, is um, we're poor in spirit because we get the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven comes down as the ladder, and the step we take is that we know that we're spiritual bankrupt. And we're mourning over this spiritual poverty, right? There is comfort in the fact that we are in God's kingdom now. But as we fight this daily battle of kingdoms in our life, remember we know there's two kingdoms that we're going to live by. It's either we're going to live in our kingdom and bend God to that or try to bend God to that, or we're going to live under the kingdom of God, right, who's Lord of our life. We need to understand that it isn't the fiercest in this kingdom that's going to prevail. Right, when we think of things and we think of, of, of sports that we play, which are not much different than if you look back in this time of the early first century Christians, like they had things that they watched and it was like battles and, and all this stuff, the Roman Empire, the gladiators, all this kind of stuff. It was always about the fiercest and who's the toughest and that was going to prevail, right? But see, in the kingdom of God, the one that prevails isn't the one that is the fiercest or the toughest. It is the one who is meek. So in, in Matthew 5, verse 5, it says this, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. See, I think this is one of the hardest beatitudes to really grasp for us in our world. And I think it has to do with our misunderstanding of the word meek. Right? When we hear meek, right, the word meek somehow comes across as weak in our culture. And I'm going to be honest. I think the only reason the word meek comes across as weak is because it sounds just like it. I've, I've done research, I've read about it. When I wrote this, I was like, why do we think that the word meek means weak? And I couldn't find any other reason other than it sounds similar, so people think it's similar. And, and so... What we need to understand right now is the word meek has nothing to do with being weak. Right? In this early picture of the Greek word that they used for this word meek, it isn't weak at all. See, we can't translate the word that the Greek word that they used for meek here into one English word. It was a phrase that they would use. And see, the main idea about this word meek was strength under control. It was like a strong stallion that was trained to do the job instead of running wild. I'll read that again. This, this picture that, that Matthew is trying to paint and that Jesus said in his sermon was simply this. It's like the stallion that we hooked to a cart and wouldn't run wild with the cart because it was under control if they knew what their job was and they knew who their master was. See, it's bending our wills to the ruler of the kingdom of heaven and living under the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that we're weak. It doesn't mean that we don't stand up to the things that are wrong. It doesn't mean that we don't um, stand up for those that, I say, the least of these. The word meek has nothing to do with being weak. It actually means that you're strong, but you're stronger than most of the strong. Right, when I watch football games, there's guys that are unbelievably strong. We have a, a guy that plays on a football team that is un, unbelievable for a teenager being as strong as he is. But it's freaky sometimes at practice because he doesn't know it and he can't control it. Like he grabbed me one day like I was a child. I was like, Ethan, put me down. He goes, oh, we're just playing around like you broke my back. <laughs> 
And I said, number one, don't ever touch me again. You stink. Like, I mean, football pads just stink, man. But it's like, and, and so it's that picture of, like, you can be super strong and know you're strong and aggressive, all this kind of stuff. But the stronger actually can bend that will, bend that strength to who's leading that, right? And so when we look at the meek, we need to understand that our excitement about our inheritance is that we are the heir of the creator of the universe. See, the, the excitement about this verse isn't that we will inherit the earth, and we're going to get to that here in a second, right? The, incite, the excitement is that we are an heir, a joint heir with Jesus to the creator of the universe. And so we will inherit the earth because of that. Now, that just doesn't mean what we think it does. So two questions as we dig in a little bit deeper this morning. The first one is this, why should a follower be meek? And the second question is this, why, what does it mean to inherit the earth? So why should a follower be meek? Because they're trained or trained, right? So when we first got Simon, there was a lot of training we had to do with him. The first one was simply this, and everybody else in here that has a dog, cats, not as much, somewhat. You got to teach them where the kitty litter is, right? But the first thing we had to do with, with Simon was to train him where to use the restroom. Anybody else use the bell? Like on the door now, anybody use that for their dogs to train them how to use? Yeah, Simon just chewed it. Bell was not his thing. So we literally, to train Simon, about five times a day, we had to pick him up and take him outside and watch him use the restroom. So we had to train him, right? And the harder stuff that had to be done, we, we, we had to go take him to lessons. I don't think Steve does his lessons around here anymore. He used to do it over there on, indus on industry um, in, in one of those garages there on industry. And he was, he was fantastic, right? And um, it, it was really about getting Simon to trust us in the training. Right, so it was, it was trying to get him to trust what we were doing was for the bit for the better of him, right? And, and so one of the first things we had to train him to do was to sit and lay, right? And so we had to be kind of hard and firm with him. We used to have to say sit, Simon. You have to push down on his hind legs so he would sit down. And then we had to push between his shoulder blades and 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 when he would lay down. And now I can just look at Simon and just say sit down, and he just kind of scoffs at me. But if I got a piece of ham, he's like, oh yeah, I'll sit. Look at me, I'm a good boy, right? But if I tell him to sit for no reason, he just goes, and just stares, right? But, but some of these hard things we had to do, right? We had to get him trained. And see, this is what it's like for a follower and why meekness is the first step after recognizing our spiritual poverty, right? See, it's the first step when we mourn that we know we're comforted. The next step is now is that we need to become meek, right? And it's the first step because God prepared our way back to him through his son Jesus, right? And we have to train ourselves to be meek because Jesus was the ultimate example of meekness. Understand he is the physical form of the creator. Now listen, I, I don't know the full extent and how God works in this trinity, Right, I use an illustration sometimes with teenagers and understand when I say this, that God is God and this Trinity thing works however God wants it to work. But, but somebody asked me one time, well, how can three things exist that are different at the same time? And I always say, well, what about water? And they're like, what do you mean? So if I was to fly up to, let's say, An Antarctica, which I would have no reason to want to fly to Antarctica other than I want to get cold, right? Or down. Antarctica's down. Arctic. Thanks, Matt. Matt caught me on that one, right? So, Antarctica, if I wanted to fly down, or, I mean, really, we're a circle, so it would just be south. I don't know if it's really down, but I don't know. But um, So, if I wanted to go there and it, where it was cold, right, and, and it was just warm enough to where we get some drops of water, so the actual form of water is water, right? So, you have God, right? You have God is water. Well, the physical form of water is what? Ice, right? We can see, we can touch it. We can, it's like, it's hard, right? And that kind of stuff, right? And then there's a gas form of water, which is what? Steam. 
Right now, understand God's God and the Trinity works in a whole different way. But those three things can all exist at the same time. Don't believe me? Heat up a frying pan and throw a piece of ice in it and see what happens. You're going to see all three of them right away. Right? But that's not exactly how the Trinity is. But it gives you a picture of all three forms of ice are different. And you can put them in different places. Or, I mean, water, right? You can put them in different places, but they exist at the same time. And so Jesus was this ultimate form of meekness because he was the physical form of the creator. He was God inside of a man. He came down as a baby, right? He, he was born like we were born. And he, he, the creator of the world submitted to the will of the Father, And so he had to be sacrificed for our sins because the wrath of God had to go fulfilled so we could have an opportunity, right? And so for me, it's unfathomable at times that he would come to earth, die a death that would provide forgiveness, but rose from the grave to give us a chance at new life. It's unfathomable to me to think that God would do that. So you got to see it's just not about him saving us, but it's about him being Lord of our life and bowing our wills to his. That's why the meek will inherit the earth. See, this is the meekness that we're supposed to have. Trusting his way is better than bending everything and everyone to ours. It's just trusting in that sense. It's like Simon, when we learn to walk Simon, he has to wear a little pinch collar when he walks, right? The guy told us, he goes, he's going to find more comfort in that later on. But when we first learned, it was scary. And he yelped and he cried and he said, this is what's going to happen. I want you to bend down and give him a hug. Because then he knows it's okay. Ultimately, this is what it's like bending our wills to God. Is we got to trust that his way is way better than ours. And typically I don't put long verses, but I've I've got a long section of scripture I want to read this morning. And it's from Philippians 2, chapter 2, and it's verses 2 through 11. It says this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but the interest of others. Have this in mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who... Though he was in form in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Which if you go back to Deuteronomy, to be hung on a tree meant that you were cursed. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus became meek and humbled himself to follow God the Father's will. See, it's about training ourselves to be like Christ. And in that meekness, we find a lot of things that will help us in life. Most importantly, is not that that Jesus is Lord and Savior of our life and, and one day we'll have an eternal reward with him. He tells us about this abundant life that we can have now. And that abundant life that he has now, there is rest in it. See, rest is not a term in the Clarkson household that we know well. But you see, when we're meek and we bow to the will of God, we get this full journey with the creator of the world. And we don't have to try to keep bending things to our will. And we can really, truly find that rest that we can just be like what what Philippians 2 talks about. We're just not looking for our own interests. We're looking for the interests of others. It's like going back, way back into Jeremiah when we, when we talk about Jeremiah and we talk about those great verses in Jeremiah where it says, seek the welfare of your city 
Because it's in that welfare you find your welfare. There's rest and there's peace in the meekness that we have by bowing to God's will. Andrew Murray, the great theologian of past, says this, Men sometimes speak as if humility and meekness would rob us of what is noble and bold and manlike. Oh, that all would believe that this is the nobility of the kingdom of heaven that this is the royal spirit that the king of heaven displayed, that is godlike, to be humble oneself, to become a servant of all. And see, as we kind of dig into this next answer, right, I want you to understand, we think it robs us of our manhood to be meek, but really what we're doing when we're not meek is we're robbing ourselves of being like God. So it's a backwards, it's, an up, it's upside down of who we are, right? So we've got to train ourselves because if the gospel and, and the Lord of all, right, comes down and he's, he comes down to die on a cross because that's God's will of how we can get back to God when we follow him, that's who we follow, And so when we are meek, we inherit the earth. And, and what's it mean to inherit the earth? And the simple answer is that it's new. And we'll get to that. I know it doesn't make sense right away, but it's new, right? There's just something about new. I remember the first car I bought with my own money. It was new, right? It wasn't a new, new car, but it was new to me, right? And so I would wash that car at least once a week, and I would vacuum that car out. I would wax that car by myself. wouldn't even trust people at the car wash with it, right? There's just something about new, right? And I would take care of that car for a long, long time, right? And then it wasn't new anymore. And there might be, and, and then you had kids. And there might be chicken nuggets still under my seat. When my kids were little, that might still be in there because it's not new anymore, right? See, for us, having something that is new is good until it's not new anymore. See, our, 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 that's our world, right? We knew, new, new, new. I love, you guys know I like shoes, right? New shoes. And then when they're not new anymore, I just wear them anywhere. See, we read the blessing in being meek, and we think of we, that we get the earth now. See, this is where we're wrong. See, we have a broken earth now. And Jesus isn't talking about this earth. Now, granted, there is something about being under his kingdom on the earth right now. That allows us to help make things new. But I want you to understand this. He's talking about the new earth. So in Revelation, right? So at the end of, at, at, towards the end of Revelation, we go through all the stuff that scares people. All the craziness in there, right? All this, got these creatures and this creature and this guy and this guy and the mark of the beast. All this stuff, right? And I would, we could... I could go on all day about that stuff, right? The stuff that scares us, right? But I want you to understand that this big battle is going to happen at a place called Armageddon, right? And it's going to be the followers of Jesus, and it's going to be all the evil people, right? And all that stuff, like it's like we're talking Lord of the Rings style. But here's what the Bible says. Before anything's done, before the first arrow shot, before the first sword's wielded, or however that will look, before any of that stuff, Jesus comes down out of the clouds and he touches his foot on the mountain, the battle's over. So we can read about the scary things, but our Lord and Savior, the meekest person that's ever lived on this earth, who bent his will to God and died on a cross and let them hang him on the cross, who was God himself, all he's got to do to end the battles of all battles is touch his foot on the mountain. So the second time when he comes down and he touches earth, it's over. And in Revelations 21.1, maybe one of the greatest verses in the Bible, it says this, 
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. That's not, they're not talking about the water sea. They're talking about the gulf between heaven and earth. There's an there's a expanse between us. We can't get there. But when this is all over and Jesus, the, the battle is over, a new earth comes down and there is no more distance in between heaven and earth. They exist together and this is our inheritance. This is our inheritance, not this fading world that we live in. The inheritance is the new world. And when you go and you read Revelations 21, and, and, and I challenge you guys to do that today, you're going to see things that you would never believe. Now, number one in Revelations 21, that's why I think animals will be there. Because they talk about animals. I'm not saying animals are in heaven, but I'm like, man, it might be a chance. Because when this new earth and heaven coexist at the same time, right? The kingdom of, of heaven comes down. It says lions will lay with lambs. There'll be no more chaos. There'll be no more anything. There'll be a tree of life on both sides of the Jordan River, and that symbolizes the people of Israel and the people that are not from Israel. We have our full chance of having to eat from the tree of life. But here's the problem right now. We spend all our time chasing power in a fading earth in our life right now. And that's not your inheritance as a follower of Jesus. This is not your inheritance. Your inheritance is one day to walk hand in hand with the Savior of the world and the God that created of all, just like Adam and Eve did in the original garden. That's the inheritance we get. We get a new, unbroken earth. No more death. No more anger. No more strife. No more broken relationships. None of that. We have a new earth. No more wars. No more earthquakes. None of this stuff. But our problem is it's not new anymore. And if we chase the power and we're not meek and, or meek and we don't bend our will to the, to, to the kingdom of heaven, the power that we gain now on earth will fade just as the earth fades. Now, if we spend all our energy going after that, we'll miss the chance. We'll miss the chance of living the life God has called us to live. Tim Keller, who was the great pastor, I'm going to say of our generation, passed away a few about a year ago. And if you've never listened to Tim Keller, you've never read Tim Keller books, phenomenal phenomenal pastor he says this our christian hope is that we are going to live with christ in a new earth where there is not only no more death but where life is what it was always meant to be that's our inheritance so i'm asking amber and matt to come back up and as i'm ending this morning we need to understand that blessed are the meek because they inherit the earth but it's also blessed is the meek that you live on the earth now. And the meekness has something to do with that. Our role as a follower of Jesus is to simply make Jesus known to the people around us. To make disciples. We talked a little bit about that Wednesday night. The Great Commission. We have a commandment and we have a commission. The commission is how you live up the commandment. The commandment is love the Lord God and love others as yourself. And the commission is make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we can't do that until we're meek enough to bow to the will of God in our life. And that's how you inherit this stuff. That's how you inherit this world. That's how you inherit the earth that we have is one day, Physically, not just spiritually, will we be in heaven. 
physically. That's why in Revelation early on it talks about the, those that have passed will join in the sky like the rapture stuff, right? Physically, you will reunite with your spirit if you pass away before that point. You see, the inheritance that we get isn't something that we should be excited about. We need to be excited that who we're the heir to. So let us strive to live in the meekness that our Lord and Savior Jesus had. Let us lay down our desire for our kingdom to be bigger than the kingdom of heaven. And let us work hard to bring that kingdom down to earth as it is in heaven. So real quick before I'm done this morning, Jesus was asked one time by the disciples, how do we pray? Here's what's funny about that prayer. I would say 90% of football teams in America pray that prayer before they go out, and it has nothing to do with a football game. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right, there's three sections to that prayer that Jesus showed them how to pray. The first one was, praise God. Our Father who out in heaven, right? The second one was, pray for your provisions. Give us our daily bread. The third is all about other people. And so the third part about this, Lord, is just like, forgive me of... Forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who sinned against me. The whole prayer that Jesus showed the disciples how to do it is basically to show you how to be meek because the world needs it. And if we pray just for us, if we pray just for our power, we'll forget that there's a lost and dying world out there because we're just trying to gain power in a dying, fading world. But the world just needs to see somebody that loves them. The world just needs to see somebody that cares about them. Not in a sense, not in our sense of just like, oh, right, right. They need to see it because they need to understand that life is meant to be eternal. And if we don't bow to the will of God, it in our life and here's the scarier part to that statement we may miss that part we may miss the, the sense that we're not letting the spirit lead us somebody's going to miss eternity because we want power in a fading world instead of just saying you know what I'll have the conversation you know what I'll do this you know what God you're right I don't need to have this argument again. You know what, God, you're right. I need to just tell them I forgive them. So two questions, and I'm done this morning about being meek. It is simply, the first one is simply this. Is it time for you to follow Jesus? And what I mean by that, is it time for you to follow Jesus? Means Is it time for you to lay your pride down and say, I can't do it? I have to take your forgiveness, and I have to take what you did on the cross and how you rose the grave because I can't do it anymore. There's a meekness in that. There's a meekness of just saying, I can't do it anymore. And then the second question goes with that. If that's you that's ready, you're ready to follow Jesus, amen. Talk to me, talk to anybody in this room before you leave, and we'll give you kind of what that looks like and what the next steps are. Now, the second question, like I always say every week, is probably more for me than anybody else in this room. It's simply, how meek are you? If you guys just spare me 30, 30 seconds to a minute, right? Friday, our school, the whole school district, the whole employees of the school district had a professional development day at Chautauqua, right? And um, so the high school, middle school went first in the morning, and we did these team building things, right? And they put us in these little teams. And I looked at my, my, my team of 12. Nicole will tell you because the elementary side went later on in the day and there were stories about our team. Number one, we were the best. Now I'm just playing, we weren't. Here's what the problem was. The first exercise, now if, if I was to tell you the names of the team, number one, I'm on it. And you guys know if there's like competition stuff not good but if I was to mention the other names 
you would be like, how in the world did you guys accomplish anything? Because every one of us were like that. And so the first thing we had to do was called three islands, right? We were on two separate islands and there was an island in the middle and they gave us two like four by sixes, right? Or two by sixes or something like that, right? And they said, you guys, you guys are the farmers and you guys are the engineers. That, that island where they're at, the farmers, they've got all the tools on it. This one's got all the places where you can make stuff. And they said, you just got to get on it. Here's what happened. We yelled at each other for 15 minutes that we had the right way to do it. I mean, yelled. And but be, be surprised. If I told you the names, you'd be like, oh, I can see that right now. And I mean, me and the other guy, one other guy on my side, Island, we said, give us the board, you're doing it wrong. And they gave us the boards and we did it the same way they did it. <laughs> I tell you this story because there was some alpha big personalities on this team. But here's the thing about being meek. It isn't about who you are. It's about who he is and what he's done. It's not about what you can do. It's about what he's done. It's about what he did. And so when I look at myself, and I would listen, I was the loudest. I was the most just, give me the boards. We're getting it done now. And then as the day went on, we got a little bit better, right? And we did this one exercise on a rope, and I, this is it. I'm done, I promise. So you swung on a rope, and you were basically playing like tic-tac-toe. You had to get in these inner tubes, right? here's what happened number one my body's killing me right now because I swung on this rope like 18 times and I'm old but number two the guy gave us a hint he said let your stronger people go first and let them get in a tube and let them catch the people let them give their power and put them in the tubes and that's how you're going to get done and when I thought about that and I thought about being meek, that's what meekness is about. It's about giving your power and catching those far from God and lifting them and praying for them and then showing them who God is. It's not about yelling at them, telling them to turn or burn. It's about catching them as they're falling. So with that, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you guys to stand up. Father, we thank you so much for your love, your grace, your mercy. Lord, this is what I thank, I thank you for. I thank you that you were meek enough to come and live the life we couldn't live. And I thank you that you're patient with us as we keep trying to get power in a fading world. Lord, thank you for the promise of a new earth and a new heaven that we can live as we originally intended to live. We want to give you the glory. So, Lord, let us just lay down the things in our life so we can pick you up and we can show people your love and your grace and your mercy. We ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation. I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me die. He's faithful through generations. So I would was built on
Thank you guys for coming out today. Um, thank you guys for joining us online. Remember tonight, yeah, you can just meet us out there at Tom's Corner Base. If you need a ride, just let me know. All right, we'll, we'll come pick you up. And really, it's student crossing, but if anybody wants to go through the maze, you're more than welcome to, all right? So we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>